Hey, uh, I'm back again to do, you know. Anyway, sit with me for a few seconds. Hello, everyone. This is CJ Hovo 992, and today we're back for another brand new video. A brand new video on a similar subject as it's three months later, and I'm sitting looking you in the eyes to say once again, we're closing in on sign in. Big Jeff. Now I know this is a bit shameless to sit here and talk about the exact same player, the exact same rumour and the exact same talking points three months after the original but I was sitting thinking should I make this video or not, should I not but again it is closing in, it is three months later, there's a lot more data to actually break down especially considering how little football he had played three months ago to where he is now we get a bit more, a clearer picture of what we're bringing in and I just like sitting talking to you about Rangers things, ladies and gentlemen. So there is a hell of a lot to discuss. So whether you've seen the previous <laughs> Big Yefty v uh, preview video slash uh, player profile or you're seeing it for the first time, I'll try to bridge the gap. So everyone leaves today's video knowing a little bit more about the potential next left back at this football club that, spoiler alert, will be the next left back of this football club. And as we do go ahead and talk about the man himself, if you didn't mean hitting that like button, that'd be greatly, greatly appreciated as we go ahead and tell the story and the rumour regarding Big Jeff Day, Hefty, Big Jeff, Little H, Triple H, whatever you want to call him, whatever pronunciation you want to use, let's go ahead and talk about it then, shall we? And before we talk about what type of player he is and then get to the numbers, let's talk about what happened with this actual rumour because again, as we've already addressed and shown, we spoke about this laddie three months ago as Rangers were badly wanting this laddie in for the title running, the big push, bringing him in, increase the standard, increase the quality at that left-back position. Again, we were told by the new director of football, Big Cop himself, he's going to go out with of what our normal scouting range was. He's bringing in, he's own experience, he's bringing in players he believes in and this was someone they badly wanted to bring in in January but again he was on loan from Flamenzi to Cyprus and over there they say, Nana we've got a season long loan hey, the laddie, I appreciate you're selling him to Rangers, I appreciate the player wants to go there, the player even went AWOL to try and force a move to joining Rangers, no turning up for actual training, no being a part of squads, the player tried everything he can to force a move in January, but the loan club stepped back and says, nah, I've got it in writing, I've got him for a year, so if you're wanting, Big J, you're going to have to wait to the end of the season, and ladies and gentlemen, that brings us full circle, we talked about it, we fired out a community post, we've kept an eye on the laddie, if you watch our regular videos right here, the regular scheduled programming, we have mentioned and kept an eye on the laddie, and Ladies and gentlemen, it's been tweeted out the man is coming for a medical very, very soon. Now that the, the Cyprus League is all wrapped up and ready to go. I think it officially ends next week, I should say, for instance. But then you're expecting him to join the football club. So that's the ifs, the oots, the shaking its or oh, boots. It's looking as, boot, as clear as day as you're ever going to see. So you didn't need to wait for me to tell you whether or not I think this rumour is true. It is true. He's on his way. But let's now just turn our focus and narrow in to see if it should be. Big Jeff, as we're going to lovingly call him right here on the channel, was a 20-year-old, six-foot left wing back slash left back that's known for his direct running, his pace, his skill on the ball, and whipping balls in the mixer. Just right away as a Rangers fan, hearing all that types of thing, hearing a bit of height as well, added to a squad that is lacking some height, it's nearly ticking every box right away. I'm almost sold already before I even get to the old nuts and crannies, but he is stuck still a very young lad that he's still extremely raw in certain aspects but what you're getting ladies and gentlemen is a big improvement in terms of quality and especially ceiling in terms of what we've seen now I'm a big fan of Red Van you've known that over the last year and a bit I wanted to see him play this Rangers team played better when he was able to play but Red Van's glaring weakness is his reliability and his ability to play week in and week out without picking up injuries he's been here a couple years he's picked up about seven or eight different different injuries, it's, the stats are there to actually tell you, but there is a hell of a lot of similarities in terms of the way Red Van plays and Big Jeff, if you will, ladies and gentlemen, and now well, there's obviously a drastic difference in terms of the height and size, but the way that they play the game, the interceptions, everything we praise Red Van for, having that bite, 
trying to go forward, no sitting about, passing it sideways or passing it back or becoming lax, nipping in and getting it. Well, Big Hefty averages nearly four interceptions per 90 minutes. That's a wee indication of his anticipation and aggression from the actual press. And again, he is someone that is absolutely lightning quick, which might sound like the, the silliest point or the silliest talking point, but for me, it's so important, especially when you look at a Rangers side these days, as for me, there is very little pace anywhere in that Rangers team. It's why I think we struggle so much in old firms. I think it's why certain players look like world beaters against us, because they can just run away and we've got big cart horses chasing after them like this. Well, now you're getting someone that is absolutely rapid, and where the likes of Rabi Matundo's rapid, you actually see Hefty, he's actually able to get on the parking pace. So you're getting someone that is as a great Aggressive as a Red Van Yelmaz is on the front foot as much as a Red Van Yelmaz, but is more reliable. And again, he's got a bit more physicality and a bit more size, and he knows how to use it. And if you remember the Cordoba video where we talked about he can play left back, but he's going to be playing left centre back, well, you can look at this now, and I can just tell you right now there is a drastic difference. A new entire dynamic of a squad has changed overnight when both these boys come in the build. And if it happens the way it should be happening, again, these can all fall apart. Angels could change their mind. Medicals can be failed. It could all come crumbling, but the way the cards are looking like they're actually going to unfold, we are seeing a drastic change in the way our left-hand side looks. The biggest glaring weakness in this Ranger side for a long time has been doing that left-hand side. Well, now you're getting Cordoba, who's big, who's powerful, and can run all day, and you're adding that in to the left-back. Now, obviously, there are drastic differences in terms of the play style as we, as we talked about Cordoba he's big powerful can fire in there and he's definitely a defender all his best attributes are defending which again is fine for me considering he's a defender and you're seeing Hefty and he's a wee bit different than that again I'm not going to sit here and say he's a world class defender and everything like that but again he is very very nippy but his pace helps him a lot and he's still a hell of a young lad as well, he's 20 year old, he's never going to be the finished article for him, sitting here saying oh, he's brilliant at this and brilliant at this, he's brilliant all round, I'd be lying to you ladies and gentlemen, all we can actually talk about is what we're given so far and what you're seeing is he's nippy, he gets stuck in, he intercepts well, he's not the greatest one-on-one -on -one defender if you look at his duels and everything like that, but at the same time, that's never been what we ask or require from our fullbacks. We need them to get forward, we need them to impact the game, and that is this guy's speciality. He also takes corners as well, so it's probably taking the weight off Tavernier having to trot from one side to the other. There is that aspect with that left foot, but ladies and gentlemen, I liked him in January, and now I've seen more of the Larry Nether there's a lot more information, there's a lot more scouting reports, there's a lot more breaking down regarding his play style. I like him even more. But with that being said, that actually gives us the perfect transition away from the player himself and get into the numbers because I can actually break some stuff down now as he's went ahead and played an entire full season. We're not looking at youth football, we're not looking at reserve football, we're looking at the top flight. It was he was on loan from Flamenzi over into the Cyprus League where he joined APL Nicosia and he actually played a vital part in them turning it on getting very hot at a certain point of the season and ending up going ahead and winning the league title. And I think you can look with a lot of frustration about the way it never happened for us in January with how badly we wanted them in and how much hatred we sent to the Cyprus squad for not allowing him to leave his loan early to join Rangers. But the fact that he's played such a vital part in that, especially in the league where he played 23 times, he had seven goal contributions and played his part in 11 clean sheets in those league matches on the way to winning the league title you can understand why they did it and he's played a massive part and that experience of winning could be vital as well when he comes up the road to Rangers as he's got a wee taste for it not many in our teams actually got a successful career so far well you look at him he's played one professional career at the top level and he's won a trophy ladies and gentlemen long long May that continue. And I really felt that was important to mention because a lot of what you're going to see online and what you're going to see on Twitter is his attacking output, his pace, his ability to beat people on the dribble, his success in taking people on and whipping the ball into the mixer and the couple goals that he scored in his career. But I wanted to take a step back and really break down just how good defensively he's been this season and just the part of the defence that he's been in. Again, keeping a, a clean sheet in 50% of his games in the league. It's a different side. He is gaming off 
obviously it's going to be taking a jump up in terms of our football compared to there and when we played European football it's obviously going to be a massive jump up but every level this lad he's took for, for youth football Brazil youth football where he's been fast tracked here and fast tracked here because there is a lot of expectation in him he's took to everything like a duck to water and now he's went to the top flight in his first season and for everything I can find he's been a massive success and became a bit of a fan favourite until he threw these toys at the plant pram sorry he wanted to come up the road there was a little bit of negativity around that but eventually when he did settle back down he didn't huff he didn't puff he never blew their season doing not he got back to work, pulled his shinies on and went ahead and helped that team go ahead and win the league title. So you're seeing a mentality, somebody not only that wants to play for Rangers, but when he didn't get his own way, he was still mature enough at his young age of just 20 to get on with the job and play his best football and know if he worked his arse off, the opportunity to play for this football club would come again and that's what we're going to be seeing over the next couple of weeks, ladies and gentlemen. This is our second defensive improvement, our second defensive of re and reinforcement and when you look at both of them how fast they are and how they go about their business it's a clear as day as jump in terms of what Clement wants in his team in terms of intensity and pace you're seeing it troops and I can't wait to see them both play. But to wrap up the old numbers and stats then, shall we? Again, just looking at the top flight of football, I'm not looking at reserve stuff or youth football, despite them being impressive numbers and I'm getting good write-ups. It's not really my type of thing I like to look at. Let's just take a step back and as ridiculous as it sounds, look at a 20-year-old footballing CV in which he's played 33 games. He has his free game, a eh, free goal, sorry, four assists and four yellow cards as well. With sometimes his pace can get him in trouble because he's bombing forward. But he's got those long strides, he's got that pace to get back and sometimes he's been known to just pull the shot, slow it down, slow a counter attack and get himself reset which is going to be vital because too many of us in our Rangers team are too nice and then he want to pull people back or give away to give their opportunity to reset. Well he's done it a couple of times this year and he's picked up a couple of yellow cards but that is really it in terms of the numbers and stats ladies and gentlemen. You're going to see all the attack and stuff and how impressive he is about dribbling this and his dribble success. That's great, I'm excited about that because it fits our formula and how we go about our business but again defensively I've liked what I've heard I've been encouraged by what I've seen so it's definitely something you can look at and say aye I can see why for the last three months we've been chasing this guy down it's not our flavour of the month he's not had a good game here and we've just bought into the hype and just typed in football manager no this is somebody we've clearly looked at been so close to getting, falling away and then keeping an eye on him for three months and identifying that's who we want. Now, we get to the old competition for places. Now, I do feel a bit silly given what I've just said in yesterday's video, if you did, go ahead and check it. But obviously, Ridvan Yilmaz, I expect to be sold this summer because there is some interest in him. Now, I like him as a player and I said in January, if we had Ridvan and Big Jeff if you will, as our two left-backs. I think we're more successful this season in terms of league football. I truly do. And that's not me being ifs, maybes or anything like that. I just didn't trust Barisic in the big games. And I think if you look at some of his performances, they've actually been rotten in some big games and some big losses that we've had in this tail end of the actual season. So I think you could have looked at that bit. We kind of just keep saying what ifs or anything like that. We didn't get them in January. We're looking forward. And I would have still liked... Ridvan and Big Jeff, but I just think with what we need to inject to our squad way, with the interest that's in Ridvan and how injury prone yet again the wee man actually is, I'm needing to get away for the injuries troops. I just need to get away for it. I need to move on for it. I want a squad of hungry players that can play. No mere people sitting in the cafeteria eating while young boys are training, filling gaps in the training centre if you catch my actual drift. So I think that is an asset we should look to sell this summer despite me rating them just too injury prone and Barisic. Let's not waste anyone's time. He's leaving at the end of the season. And this, for me, is an improvement on what Barisic is these days. Again, I'm not going to talk about what he was four years ago because that boy was one of the best crossers I've ever seen. Yefte or Big Jefte or whatever you want to call him can certainly bring that attacking flair and bring that crossing. But I'm not going to sit and say he's as good as Barisic at crossing the football because no many actually were. But he's still young enough to grow and become a player and... That's all I've got to say regarding the competition for places. If he was signing right now, I'd be starting him 
at the weekend, if I'm honest with you, but that's obviously not going to be the case. But that is it in terms of the last thing. Again, the Rooney rumour or anything, do I believe it to be true? Yes, I believe the deal is nearly done. It just needs the medical. It'll be done and dusted and it'll be announced very, very soon. Now I hand the reins over to you guys. Now the pictures became a bit more clearer. Now we've got a wee bit more information. Are you still as excited as you were in January? Because there was a lot of people excited. Let me know down in the comment section below or are you a wee bit unsure given what some of the other transfer business we've actually done but you look at that left hand side now Cordova you're talking about hefty and if you add an Oscar Cortez doing that left hand side that is real real pace and it's a complete 180 than what we've had for a very very long time very interesting to see what you're saying sorry this video was uploaded a wee bit later than normal but hopefully you enjoy it anyway as always I've been CJ992 thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye